Welcome to Binary Ninja Basics. These videos have been recorded out of our weekly live streams to give you a quick overview of Binary Ninja. We're gonna look at the different views we have. So the original way that you would switch views is down in the bottom right corner. So we can switch views down here. We can also use the view menu up top, right? And so you can switch between views in the view menu. And of course, all of the docs, right? Again, so turning dock widgets on and off. The byte overview and the triage summary are two related views. In fact, they're both created by a plugin. It just happens to be a plugin that we ship by default. And there are other plugins. You can add your own plugin that adds its own distinct view. And again, the view is shown. This is like the main view kind of thing here. Dock widgets all go around the outside edge. We can switch to triage summary, for example. This one was built specifically for for antivirus research. In fact, there's even a dedicated way to open files into triage view. If you do open for triage right there, it will like go straight into this view and it will also do a very fast minimal analysis. Again, it's meant to actually support multiple files. You can load a whole bunch of files at once, do a quick basic analysis, and then you get the triage view. And this just gives you an overview of the binary. You can even make this the default view. If depending on the type of analysis scenario you're doing, you may actually want this high level overview just seeing imports, just seeing exports, seeing some of the like basic information, kind of a high level overview before you do anything else. This is an entropy map and to distinguish it from the feature map. So the feature map that I've got on top, which is normally on the side, shows a couple of different categories of information. So it shows things that are strings versus function versus data. But the entropy map is just what it sounds like. It's just entropy. You know, if it's compressed or random, it will be very highly entropic. And if it's just a run of nulls, it will be very low entropy. So I can click into one of these regions of low entropy, go there and sure enough, there's just a lot of, not a lot of nulls, right? So if you've got like a packed binary or an encrypted blob, you're just gonna see solid color, right? And you're gonna see like darker color if it is probably more a mixture of more code. If you open a PE file, you'll get a different set of things in the triage view. In fact, I think it includes a little bit more information. There's a bit more information in this header, right? It shows you a lot more about what's going on. If you want to know what, a, what an executable does, and you can look through just all of the imports real quick, assuming they're not doing any crazy shenanigans, you kind of have an idea of like what capabilities it's got. It's got some heap calls, just looking over the imports of any binary, right? So strings and imports, in my opinion, are the two like fastest ways just to get an overview of what a program could do. And then of course, you know, some of this header information you can get out as well. So that's the triage summary. And I said bytes overview is related and it's related because it was asked for at the same time. And so this is a feature that is a little bit gibberish, right? Like this is like the old DOS code page. Like if you saw this with the blue screen and white font, you'd be like, yeah, I recognize that. It has this one distinct advantage and that this is like the most dense view of a binary you can get short of like some sort of graphical representation with like entropy or feature map or something like that, right? Each byte is distinct and it has its own distinct code points. So you can see sort of patterns in the structure and there are literally malware reversers who've used hue or other like tools and recognize like code versus other things in binary just based on this particular code page. You know, you can obviously see distinct patterns of different uh, results. I have no idea what the difference between these two sections are, but clearly you can tell there is a difference. I do like it just for how dense it is. And if you're even just looking at like a lot of strings, for example, if you flip to our normal hex view, which we will do now, the hex view is just so much less dense, right? So we're only going to get, uh, it looks like 32 bytes, right? Across here, like the hex itself takes up most of the screen. And this is the actual values and all the non-printables or anything non-ASCII just gets shown as a dot. And so that's where the difference between the byte overview and the hex view is. But of course, hex view is nice if you actually don't know that code page or you wanna make change to the file and you can edit the hex as well. So you'll notice I'm in the hex view, but I'm still actually in mapped addresses, right? And so I'm actually looking at the PE as it would be loaded into memory. So you can see even here, this is a different segment in memory, right? Cause this one ends and the next page boundary, we've got this one here. And so that's actually a distinct segment, but we can change down over here. You have the PE view and then the raw view of the binary. So the raw view is literally just what you'd expect a hex header to be. Like byte zero is the first byte of the file. You've got your MZ header because this is the PE we opened. Uh, and then you've got, you know, on order as it exists on disk. And it is nice. You can still see the feature map, for example, works in that. You've got just this overview of the bytes in the binary without having to, to do anything different. And then we switch back into the PE view. Now suddenly we've got a bunch of code. Right, so this is all like shellcode and this all exists in functions and so it gets color coded differently and we've got the addresses as they're mapped in. All right, so linear disassembly is the next step up and I would say it's, it's the next step up because we can go from hex view to a linear disassembly view and we're still gonna get hex, right? So if we actually go to a region where there's no function, we're gonna get just this. Now this looks like a function to me, so that looks very much like a function prototype. So I can hit P on it, create a function. Now because I open it in triage, 
None of these functions are going to get analyzed heavily, and that's also why we didn't find this function, because linear sweep and other things were turned off. So we could turn that on, we could we could trigger a linear sweep, or we could even just go back to the triage view and has a start full analysis button. So we kick that off, and that actually says, yeah, no, go ahead and make all the functions uh, everywhere on this binary, right? Linear view, I really, really like it, just because your ability to look at both the assembly, but then to switch over to like a high level IL view. This is like the densest view of a function. If we actually flip over, to assembly now we've got you know twice the amount of actual instructions and so it's just going to be always the the easiest to read in terms of like highest level summary of course high level IL also may have the most abstractions and has the highest potential for error so you have to be careful about that as well but it's super valuable so we've got all the IL views in linear view one thing that doesn't exist now but should hopefully fairly soon is if you notice when i hit space it's going to flip me in a graph view so space will toggle you back and forth between graph and linear. It's kind of just like a shortcut key. It's just, I'd, I use that key as well. And so it was just muscle memory for a lot of us. And it's, you notice it switched me between disassembly graph and linear disassembly. So I can hit space and go back and forth between these. In the disassembly graph, this particular feature here is really nice. Being able to like select the IL view of the graph that I'm looking at. Currently linear view doesn't have that. That is something that we'd like to add uh, back to the option menu while we're at it. There's also other options we can turn on and off in several of these views and we can hit that via the options menu. So this is going to depend on the view that we're in. Some are, are in many of them like show address we can turn on and off and that's going to be the same option. So if we can turn show address off in graph as well we can. So some of them are similar and, and some of them are distinct. If I'm in the hex editor for example I can change how the colors are highlighted modification yeah so if i've actually changed bytes it's going to highlight just the uh, oh i've got file lock on so i can turn that off and just just the bytes i've changed are highlighted we could change it to ascii oh that's right so the actual pink color here is ascii imprintable right so that's the current the current one this background highlight here we go is the byte value yeah so if it's a little subtle but yeah there we go you can see a lot more here Again, it's just kind of an interesting way to highlight based on the values itself. So the, the depth changes there. Contrast. Oh yeah, I can do high contrast if you really want that, that background to pop out. Which again, if you're actually working with like image formats, you can see image data almost and you kind of see patterns more. Types. This is just all of the types that have been defined in the binary. This filter is relatively new. Pretty excited about that. So not only can I do things like search for a type and then filter out just, you know, things with instruction but I can also say, look, I only want to see the user types. The only things that I've added manually, I want to see in this particular list. So that's that's nice. And th this particular their menu, there's some hotkeys and there's some right click things to edit the types and to, to interact with them. One of our goals actually though, is to avoid you having to go to a dedicated types view all that often. We'd really like for you to be able to do most of the stuff you want to do right in the disassembly where you live. I can actually hit S here and I can turn this particular offset into a variable on this type. So you can actually change the types of things in the disassembly or in the IL view that you're looking at, usually just by using S or hitting Y and changing the type of information. The last but not least, strings. Strings is just a list of strings in the binary. In fact, it's very, very similar to the command line strings utility. It just looks for things that look like they might possibly be ASCII strings. It can also look for strings and other encodings. You can control those encodings in the settings when you open a file. If you know you've got a different like code, code page, you can you can specify it there. But it's just going to list the address and it's going to list the string. If you type, you'll actually filter it down. So you can just see the strings that match just the word bit. If you select a string here, you can, you can select one string at a time. But if you actually double click it and you're in the linear view or the hex view, you can actually select a block of bytes. And then you can actually get string references or cross references to any of those those strings, which is kind of nifty. That's a nice feature I think that a lot of people don't know about. So if you've got like a blob of strings or you don't know where the reference is, and this will happen especially you know if a decompiler misses uh, a base table and an offset, you know it's, it's how it's, the lookups are happening. Maybe you have to find the base, and so just sort of selecting a whole bunch of it and catching the base will catch you references to substrings sometimes, or you know compilers will reuse part of a string as an offset from another one. And so even if the high level analysis doesn't compute that that offset, you'll still see it just by just by selecting that. That is the overview of the many just kind of views, the main ways you look at data in Binary Ninja. And again, these are extensible. You can add your own. The fact that that triage view does what it does is you can actually replace the built-in native one, the C++ one, with a Python version. We've actually built both. In fact, the very first prototype of it 
was built in Python. So here's the triage view. That's the there's a Python version of the triage view. So I could you could turn off the core uh, C++ plugin and you could drop the Python one in your plugin folder uh, and then make some changes to it and you could you know do it yourself. There's also the Kaitai plugin, which uses Kaitai struct to decompose files. Again, it makes its own whole brand new view. And so you actually, when you're analyzing a file, you've got a, a, a new view type uh, that you can select. That's the Kaitai view, and that will decompose that file according to whatever match it thinks it is and give you like the tree view kind of a uh, dissection.